Bruce McConnell here with Locomotive Systems Training. Welcome back. We're still in air brakes. Uh, fascinating subject, interesting subject, very quite often misconstrued, uh, mystic, magical, whatever term you want to use. We'll see if we can take some of the mystic and magic out of it for you. All right, we're in air brakes. This is basic pneumatic air brake systems continued. This is LSTV-036. No wonder I'm tired. All right, so here we go. Again, the review. You, you know, you might love it, you might hate it, but if you want to learn air brakes, this is one of, one of the best ways I know to learn air brakes. You come to a point where you're like, I don't get it, I don't understand it, you want to walk away, or you walk away. You come back, you sit down, you clear your mind, and you just read it again, you read it again, you listen to what I'm telling you. And after a while, guess what? Oh, I know what an SA26 independent ray valve does. Oh, I know what a J relay valve does. Oh, I know what the dead engine feature is for. Oh, I know what this is for. Oh, I know what that's for. And you'll be amazed that the more you go back and visit this and just listen to it, the more, the more knowledge you'll gain and it'll, be, it'll become clear to you. All right, what component is this? This here is a dead engine cutout cock. There it is, right there. Open that valve and you put the locomotive in dead engine status. Remember we talked about that from the last video where you go in, uh, the engine blew up, the main generator blew up, the air compressor blew up if it was shaft driven. You can't use the engine, the, the prime mover, in the locomotive for dead end consist, which yeah, there's a dead end consist. So you put this back in the train and, and you operate as a loaded Bosch car. That's what the function of that is. So let's take a look at it. When you cut in, the end of the DIT opening this valve will allow brake pipe air to enter in the number two main reservoir and charge the main reservoir up to what the pressure regulator said at usually 31 to 40. What? 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 Brake, pre brake pipe pressure feeding main reservoir, but yes. And I know it doesn't make sense right now, but remember I told you in the last video, don't worry about it. It will come. Okay? Just go with it right now. If you get it, great. If you don't get it, that's great too. It, it will come to you. All right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, A19 flow adapter. Oh, hey, we're getting fancy here. A19 flow adapter. Okay? It reduces main reservoir flowing. Okay? Flowing f to the brake pipe from the main reservoir up into the automatic brake valve. We're going to limit how much output we can have of brake pipe air going out of that locomotive. Okay? Okay, let's go to the next one. What component is this? From the last video, I'm not going to tell you. You're going to tell me. What is it? Oh, there it is. The branch pipe cutout cock. And this is using the branch pipe. Remember, what does BP equals BP mean? BP means brake pipe in the branch pipe. There's branch pipe in the brake pipe. Okay? It's orange air. Brake pipe. Look at the diagrammatic. Orange air. This component is used to isolate the 26F control valve from the rest of the brake pipe system when servicing or maintenance is required. Go. We also talked about the branch pipe filter. I bet that's the answer. It just bounced in there, didn't it? The branch pipe filter cleans that brake pipe air additionally because it needs it because of the 11 chokes and orifices that are in that control valve. You plug them up your brakes aren't going to work right in that lead locomotive or train locomotive. The air going to that valve and to that bracket has to be pristine clean. Okay? Moving right along. Control valve. This guy provides a pipe 16 signal. Well, hold on. There's three components. 26F quick release valve, 26F service portion, and the pipe bracket. Okay? That's what the... That's what the uh, uh, Control valve, 20, hang on a second, 26 step control valve does, okay, it consists of those three components. It's using the automatic brake circuit, just so you know, boom. And what is this component, ladies and gentlemen? This is the J relay valve. Remember, when I move the automatic brake valve handle, I do not send air directly from the automatic brake valve down the brake cylinders. Uh-uh, not happening. I move the independent brake handle over from release to full application. That valve does not send air from there directly to the brake cylinders. Uh-uh. It does not happen that way. Each system has several components that it goes to before it gets to the J relay valve and then the J relay valve sends that air down to the brake cylinders. Okay? Again, the J relay is it's a responding valve that will sit there until the cows come home waiting for something to do. It will just sit there. Very robust valve, very reliable valve. This guy responds either pipe 20, independent circuit, or pipe 16, automatic circuit, or both, provide a large volume of air that goes down and fills up all the brake cylinders, well, whatever pressure the handle is removed to. Okay? There's three types of J relay valves. There is a non-multiplying, 
whatever error comes in, output is the same as input. There's multiplying up, air that goes in, comes out at a higher pressure. Then there's multiplying down where the air that goes in actually comes out less. And we'll get into that later. Okay? What is this part right here? She's really testing me. She's got them all jumbled up. This here is a SA26 independent brake valve. It's used in the independent circuit. That's, that's an easy do. This guy creates pressure, two pressures, pipe 20 for the independent circuit, which acts as either parking brake or augment, brake augmentation, and it also has pipe 13, which is right there, which is used for bail-off or actuation. Now, you have to be careful with these signals because some of these have a lot of high pressures on them. Okay, here we go, the last one for you. This is a 26C automatic brake valve. What is this ultimate goal I told you in the last video? It's a brake pipe regulator. It regulates brake pipe increases and decreases by controlling equalizing reservoir increases and decreases. Very reliable valve. It's an initiating valve. Remember, we control the res equalizing reservoir, which in turn will control brake pipe, which controls the increases and decreases of brake pipe, which tells that control valve over there what to do. Sends that signal down to the J relay valve. The J relay valve will take that signal and send it down to the brake cylinders. Don't worry if you're not getting it. You're sitting there going, oh my God, what is this guy telling me? Trust me, air brakes is not the easiest thing in the world to learn. But by no, by no means is it the most difficult thing in the world to, to understand. The benefit you're having is you've got these two or three or four videos that you can go back to and watch each one, pick up a little more information on each one, go back and review them once a day, spend about 20 minutes in each video, or however long they are, put it away, come back the next day, and after a while you're going to go, I got it. I got it, I got it, and next thing you know, you're going, hmm, I know what that valve is, I know what it's going to do. All right, we've got to throw in a couple new valves, here we go. This is the dead engine feature, remember we talked that from the last class? There are two different t systems that provide dead engine protection, with one is a three component system with, which includes a dead engine cutout cock, a Schrader bellows or a wash regulator, and a one-way check valve. These are mostly, and notice I said mostly here, are found on EMD locomotives. Mostly. Because sure enough, you'll get on a locomotive and you'll see this Schrader Bellows or Watts on a G and go, hey, guess what, Bruce? You were wrong. No, I'm not wrong. I said mostly. Okay, so let's go on to component number two. Or number two, two is a two component system. It'll have a dead engine cutout cock and a strainer check valve. Doesn't look anything like a Schrader Bellows here. It's completely different, it's different shape, size, but the function is almost the same. Notice it says strainer, check valve. Let's look at the strainer, huh? Strainer, what does that mean? We're going to strain or filter that air. Remember, that's brake pipe air going into the main reservoir. So you're gonna strain it and filter it again. Check valve means what? Allows flow one way and one way only. The air can go this way, but it can't come back this way, okay? <clears throat> the one-way no, one check valve is internal in the strainer check valve. So you're not gonna have both of these on the same locomotive. You'll have one, one com either a three component system on one or a two component system on the other. And by the way, these are mostly found on GEs, but guess what? You're gonna find a few on the MDs and you're gonna find a few of these here in the three component on a GE. So don't call me with that. I already understand, I already got it. That's why we use the word mostly, okay? All right, let's take a look at the control stand display. A lot of confusion here, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I remember when I first hired on the railroad, they say, well, you know, you move the handles, needle the move, it's all good. No, that is not the way to learn air brakes, trust me. The control stand displays three different gauges. The two gauges on the left indicate air pressure, that's this one, and this one. The gauge on the right is a brake pipe airflow indicator, CFM. It even says there, AFM, AFM, airflow method indicator. Remember we talked about that A19 flow adapter? The last review, the A19 flow adapter sends air up to, the, to two pipes at the bottom of this valve. And what that, that, what that needle does, it measures deflection of brake pipe air flowing through that brake pipe system. The numbers are low, and by the way, it does it in cubic feet per minute, CFM, okay? Um, so that's what that valve does. And it's, it's right, right, it starts out like a 20, 40, 60, and way over here is like 80 CFM per minute. Let's talk about this here, the gauge on the left has a red arrow, and a red needle and a white needle. The red needle on the left is main reservoir. Most locomotives will pump up to 130, 140. That's for cut in and cut out. That's the air that supplies the air for the entire locomotive air brake system. The white needle on the left 
is equalizing reservoir. This is a guy that's only 26 feet in length. This guy tells this white needle what to do. But before we jump too far, let's go to the gauge on the right. There's a red needle and a white needle there as well. The red needle on the right gauge is brake cylinder air, and the white needle on the right gauge is brake pipe air. Now, I always tell people a simple way to remember this, you know, you're sitting in, you're sitting in the locomotive, and if these were wiper blades, and they went like this, not like this, but they went like this, you can envision that these two move in harmony this way. Now, I always tell everybody in the basic air brake class, who's the boss of these two systems? Well, the answer is equalizing reservoir, the needle on the left. He is the boss. He can be actually be adjusted up, down, or dialed into 90 pounds on a freight unit. This guy tells, or equalizing reservoir tells brake pipe what to do. So he's the boss, he's not the boss. If equalizing goes up, brake pipe goes up. If equalizing goes down, like in a brake application, brake pipe will go down and brake cylinder will come up. Whew. Now, that's a lot to digest right there. So go back and review this one a few times to get the understanding of the correlation of how these two gauges work, in, work together. There is one, only one exception to the rule when this guy doesn't listen to this guy, and that's when that locomotive goes into emergency. When this locomotive goes into emergency, and there's a whole bunch of different types of them, if this guy goes into this locomotive or the locomotive anywhere in that train goes into emergency, that, local, that gauge, that needle right there will drop to zero. <laughs> Boom, right now, real quick. The speed of that air dropping down is equal to or greater than 900 feet per second. That's pretty fast. Now, I'm no ballistic expert, but I've been told by friends and colleagues that 900 feet per second is about the speed of a slow grain 22. That's pretty fast for moving air. Really fast. So, again, needle on the left, the white needle here is the boss of the white needle on the right. Main reservoir is usually going to be 120, 130, and that usually stay in that area. Brake cylinder will go anywhere between 0, clear up to 72 to 75 in emergency. But the white needles work together, and the boss of those two white needles is the one on the left, equalizing reservoir. Everybody got that? By the way, just take a look at this picture for a second. You notice right here a little flip cover right here for, for so you don't inadvertently hit it? What's it say on the side of that? It says emergency. This is what they call a head of train device or an or a, 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 HO, HOT. Yeah, head of train. And this guy would, would, would communicate with a, what they call an EOT or end of train device at the back of the train. If this engineer wanted to put this locomotive in emergency or train, he could flip that switch and do it here and dump the air, the brake pipe to the whole train, or he could go with automatic brake valve. Remember I talked about the handle? You go from release and recharge, and you take that handle, it goes all the way over to the farthest position to the right. Boom, that would be emergency. This way or that way would net the same result. Well, that's good to know. All right, so a lot of information there. All right, so air brakes is fun, really, when you think about it. 26 Charlie automatic brake valve, SA26 independent brake valve, J relay valve, and there's a whole bunch of other valves that are still left in the system. But anyway, so what I want you to do, again, go to our website, www, and again, that's not a 1, that's an L. Even though it absolutely looks like a 1, it's an L. www.lst-ca.com is our web address. That's www.lst-ca.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Have a safe day.